loves me. How many know this this morning?
yes, Jesus loved me. And that love accomplished everything that he desires me to be. He called us all from a place of unworthiness. This is why when you get your little Holy Ghost, you can't look down on nobody else. Because he calls all from a place of undesirable. To him, it was undesirable. Mm -hmm. the scripture says it this way. We are all sinners saved by grace. Amen. This should humble you when you're dealing with other people. You can't look at them just because you have some knowledge of who he is and that they don't have the knowledge you have. Because when you look at all of us in comparable to the sight of God, we all are souls. And the Bible said all souls belong to me or mine. So this is why you can't think you better than somebody because you got a little Jesus but on your name. Because we're all souls. God look at the ungodly as much as he looked at the godly. He's concerned about them just as much as he's concerned about you. Amen. 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 What are you saying, Pastor? I want to teach this church to love like God love us. Amen. Stop being so high-minded. So untouchable. So I'm already in heaven attitude. That's right. That's right. And you're still down here with the rest of us. Uh -huh. Amen. Still here. I haven't seen you conform to no angel or whatever you are. Right. Go up. As long as you still down here, you have a chance to sin. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen, somebody. That's right. And so none of us should look at anybody else. I, I will say this, and I know. I was in a place where they thought it was so self-righteous, they made me sick. Oh my God. And I will say. They looked at people measured them by what they seen. Mm -hmm. They measured them by the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And I seen them reject a soul that was seeking the Lord because they measured that soul by the outward appearance. Do you know God will get you for something like that? Yes, you will. Yeah. Bible said, be careful how you entertain a stranger. For in one case, you might be entertaining an angel. Amen, right. You discard somebody that don't match up to your religiosity or your standard, but not to the standard of God. Yes, Jesus. Lovely, we're going to go to the scripture. Three passages of scripture. First John 4. Starting at 7, we will read down to verse 12. 1 John, general epistle. This is a general epistle. Now, I want you to note that in your consciousness. Now, some of you that are, that are not um, disabled, you should stand. Because when you go into a court of law, they say, all rise. If that court deputy look out there and you ain't rose, they will come to you and get you for contempt of court. If you're not disabled, when we read scripture, you should stand. Because God just stepped in the room. Not that he was not here, but we acknowledge who he is in the letter. This is God right here. So let us stand. 1 John 4, 7 through 12. And when you got that, Matthews, 5, 43 through 48. 
Help the new saints. Thank you, evangelist. Thank you. Thank you. Help the new people find these scriptures. Amen. Then finally, Mark 12, 30 and 31. We'll read it and you'll hear it again. 1 John 4, starting 4 verse. Chapter 4, I'm sorry. Starting in verse 7 through 12. Matthews, chapter 5, starting in verse 43 through 48. Mark, chapter 12, 30 through 31. If you have those, respond by saying amen. Amen. 1 John 4 and 7. Beloved. Let us, not, let us love one another, for love is of God. Love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and know God. He that loveth not, not, knoweth not God, for God is love. For God is love. For God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God towards us. Because that when God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Not that we love God, but what? Love but what? Love and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No man have seen God. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. If we love one another, God dwells in us. Matthew, glory. Matthew 5. Starting in verse 43, this is Jesus teaching his disciples, amen, on the Sermon of Mount, on the Sermon of Mount, teaching them how to love their enemy. This is the teaching of Jesus, teaching his disciples how to love their enemy. Ye have heard. That it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that what? Oh, somebody got stuff tripped up on that one. Do good to who? And what? The what? What they say? Despitefully what? You. Love you. Just despitefully love you. Use you. Huh? Is that what they say? Yes. And what? Persecute you. That ye may be who? Which is who? For what? I want the church to read that together. 45, that you may be who? The children of God. Come on. Yes. For if we love them, which what? Love you. What reward has he? Do you not, not, do not even the public is the same? And if he salute your brother only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans also? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You need to be perfect by having the love of Jesus. Some of us are still working on it. That's right. Some of us are still working on it. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. Some of you are not there yet. Because you don't know how to love your neighbor. As you love yourself. Let's go to the final Mark. Chapter 12, 
30 and 31. Chapter 12, 30 and 31. Are we there? Let's read it together. And thou shalt call upon upon yes the first commandment second is what? Yes love thy neighbor as I love thyself dear gracious father Teach us today, Lord. Open our minds, Lord. For Lord, you've already revealed in many of us that we're not where we say we are. Amen. And God, this is one of the layers that your people have to learn to master. How to love like God loves them. And Lord, I ask, Lord, by the end of this message, that they receive this, Lord, in the way you have imparted it in my spirit. In Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. amen. And again we say amen. amen. You may be seated. One of the contrasts and the difficulties that I have noticed in the church growing up is the people of the saints of God knowing how to love by God. A lot of times we mistaken our righteousness as love. So what are you saying, Pastor? We use it as a defense to quantify love. We use our righteousness to say in these type of words, they ain't say they ain't got what we got. Now, I'm not saying that when we see sin, we don't know what it is. But I'm saying we should not allow our righteousness to make us look upon another person as lesser because they don't have the wisdom or the understanding which you may have in God. And some of y'all been here a long time. You still ain't where you need to be. Amen. Amen. Some of you still struggling with the simplicities of the truth. Amen. But when the church learn how collectively to love like God loves, we'll be able to turn this world upside down. Jesus laid an example to us about love. And we have a name for it, and he, he is the master of it. He is the example of it. We call it agape. When we learn to love without conditions, when we learn to love, like 1 John mentioned, have the love of God, then we a man will be able to draw others through the lifestyle which we project. One thing that a, a, a person that don't understand God really dislike is somebody that portrays because they are in church. Can I say it that way? Because they can speak in some kind of tongue. Or they might carry a Bible every once in a while. And they go to Bible class on the daily. They go to Sunday morning service on the daily. One thing a person that's seeking agape don't want to see is you portraying your self-righteousness. They don't want to see that out of you. Amen. Amen. What they first want to see in you is that you love them like God loves you. And let me say this. Because God is the creator of agape love, he is the administrator of it. 
And so the Tammy says he's the administrator of it. He put a portion of it in all of us. This is why we always have a desire. No, no matter how bad we or how far we drift, we have a desire deep down to seek out that which has called us and conformed us. Because God give us a portion of himself, which is the soul of man. That soul constantly cry out for that. This is why yesterday people were attracted because they're seeking something. And I'm going somewhere here. They're seeking something that's missing. And it's up to you, if you call yourself a child of God, to introduce them to it. You can't introduce them to it if you're doing everything that God tells you not to do. And treating them with a mean spirit. The Holy Ghost ain't mean. And treating them with I'm better than you attitude. That ain't the Holy Ghost. That's not the spirit of God. Treating them, look how you look. Look how I look. That's not. Because I have to remind you, such was some of you. God didn't cast you off. When you came seeking him, he didn't throw you away. But he received you. And he's trying to teach the church. This is what you have to portray. And let me say this, because God has given all of us a portion of his love, of godly. Do you know people realize faith, love, from a godly love? Do I have a witness in it? Those that don't know God, they know what real love looks like. Because God put it in them to recognize it. This is why children, when they grow up, you can tell when children, a person is mean. Children stay away from mean people. Yes, they do. They recognize it. They, uh, they can't tell you, you know, like, oh, well, something, something about them I just don't like. Children, they don't say that. They just say, I'm not going around you. <laughs> <laughs> or if you say, baby, come here, they run and go the other way. Because <laughs> they have that love. They recognize what real life is. I ain't got a witness in here. They recognize the love that God put in them. That's the calling. And I'm so glad. And when I was yet a sinner, Christ showed a copy. The title of the message, I'm not going to mess up. What does love got to do with it? Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. What does love got to do God. To do with it. Now I know y'all ain't some of y'all ain't been saved all your life. The title is very familiar. Might back some mind back mind fact some of you back in the day. Had your hair all out and had your heels on in the mirror. When you was mad at that person you was so in love with, they messed you up. You got in the mirror. What love got to do? <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to me. <laughs> what a secondhand emotion. <laughs> Who needs a heart when a heart, and y'all be real out there, when a heart can be broken? save all your days. <laughs> Come on here. My fact, some of y'all still saying that to your husband and wife. <laughs> well, I have to give credit to the songwriter. This was a song launched by Tina Turner yes. doing one of the greatest comebacks yes. in music history. This was a multi-platinum album 1984, the album was called Private Dancer. And it contained this hit, What Does Love Got to Do With It? This hit 
allowed Tina Turner to win a Grammy, become one of the oldest individuals at 44. First to receive a hit on the top 100 billboard. And also this song will allow her to be the first artist of her age to receive a Grammy that late in their career. We're not focusing on the thoughts of Tina Turner, but we want to focus on the thoughts of the word of the song. Just that portion, not the whole song. Mm -hmm. What does love got to do with it? Though the song was a smash hit, but I don't understand really what she was referring to when I sit down and listen to the words of the entire song. But with God, I know this. Love got everything to do with it. That's right. Amen. 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 We be living a life without redemption. Yes. So love got everything to do with it, Andre. Let your neighbor one more time to the bottom and say, this is about love. This, is about love. this whole thing's about love. Yes. And because it's about love, darling, all of us need to learn how to do it. Yes. According to the way God has instructed us to do it. Amen? Amen. When, the peop when we as the people of God learn the spiritual meaning of what love has to do with it, we will then learn how to love like Christ. A love without boundaries. This is called a godly love. It's not a love that has false pretenses or conditions. You know, people in the church, we need to be able to learn how to love without boundaries or conditions. This is why we used the exercise yesterday of going outside these four walls. We can talk love in this building all day long, that's right, that's right. but it ain't helping nobody that don't hear it outside of these walls. A godly love will take you to some diverse places. Mm -hmm. It'll take you up to a stranger that don't necessarily look like you, it will make you be intrigued to others that do not uh, have the status in life that you have. It'll make you go to them that you can see is on some type of addiction. We're we'll talking about God be love. Yes. Them that smell a little something. Yes. And them that look a little different. Yes. God be love has no condition. It has no boundary. And this is one of the things we're trying to establish here in this church is that we learn to love like God loves us. What does this look like? A copy love is a love that carries, that cares without hypocrisy. You know, some people love you, Van Smith, as long as you can give them something. Is that right, Evangelist? That ain't real love. Some pastors only love you long as you're a good tie payer. I ain't had no witnesses in here. Some churches will only put up with you long as they know that you are doing, contributing in large sums of money. And if you down there with the two mice, they just, uh, well, uh, I ain't gonna deal with this one. I heard no one say. When that million dollar person comes, let me help, let me help, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to leave this one alone and deal with the million dollar gift. Because you know with Christ, the lady that gave the two mites gave as much as the million dollar gift. That's a God. We have to move away from love with conditions and attachments. We got to move away from love with hypocrisy. This also looks like giving without wanting to receive. A lot of folks say they love you. Borrow $10 from them. <laughs> and don't give it back. 
<laughs> Boy, your name is dirt. No good. Saints, I'm talking about church folks. I gave them $10. Ten <laughs> yeah, give me my 10 back. $10? Run a person down, kill them, murder them with your tongue for $10. Wow. That's not, that's not love. That's not love. Could you imagine that God held something against you for what you said you were going to do? Amen. Some of you say, when I get my new job, I'm going to bless God. I'm going I'm, I'm to give. I'm going to and you didn't get one red penny. Ain't God good? Amen. You came back. God didn't hold that against you. He kept you on that good job, making that fat money. God didn't take it away from you. Huh? See, we don't treat other folks like God treat us. Amen. We have to learn that love have everything to do with it. And because love has everything to do with it, so to go with it, you know how I see everybody? I see everybody with the love of God. Amen. Well, I'm learning how to do that. Let me, let me, let me be transparent. I'm learning how to do that. Amen. It's not easy, but it's something that's necessary in the body of Christ. If the church is going to be the church, we have to learn to love everybody the way God loves us. Amen. You cannot, as the scripture said, that's why we read that. God reigned on the just as well as the unjust. Is that right? Amen. God has no respect to person when it comes to love. Hallelujah. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Yeah. We read about the commandments. Everybody got the first one down. Oh, I love God. I love God. I love God. Do you really love God? Yeah. Well, God said this, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, the second is as great as the first. Yes. See, God, I do everything in the first, but the second one, I got problems yeah. with. Uh -huh. What is that, Pastor? You know, I can't love nobody that despitefully used me, that has hurt me and abused me. Yeah. I can't love them. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did not, the Mark, did not Matthew tell you how to love folks? That do you that way? Oh, y'all looking at me like y'all ready to leave right now. <laughs> but I'm still going to teach on love. Amen. And some of y'all far from it. And some of y'all Holy Ghost folks too. Y'all ain't where you need to be. This is why folks are not coming into the kingdom like they should be. Because you got blockers up. Well, they ain't wearing skirts that's flipping on them. They ain't out buttoning up. Yeah, that's a distinction. But it's not enough for you to decide the distinction. Wait, 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 wait. Jesus said, let me tell you, in the kingdom, it is like this. It's a great net. That's it. I'm talking about God's love. And the net don't have no restriction. That's right. The net is God's love. He said, I sent my only begotten son into this world to only save the saved. No, no. Is that the scripture? No. Matter of fact, you know that Bible. Is that the scripture to only save the saved? That's not what he said. He said, I came to save them that was we well, was once lost. Amen. And it was God the net that grabbed you and brought you in. And he said, this is why the net when it bring it in, don't you be doing any separating. Because you ain't good enough. You ain't God. You let God handle his business. You let him love him them the way he needs to love them. Because your love is tainted. Ain't nobody talking to me in here. Your love ain't good enough. But when we start loving folks like God, we get out the way. I made up in my mind. I said, I'm going to start letting God save people. Amen. I am. I'm not going to be around here Chasing folks, calling them, wearing their life out. That's not my job. God said they can't come unless I draw them anyway. Right. Right. Ain't nobody talking to me. 
See what I do when I get in it, I start using my measurement of love. And some of y'all wouldn't be here if it was my measurement of love. <laughs> can I be real? Yes, can. From the Holy Ghost teaching I got. It was like, if you had a red tie, you wouldn't say. Right. Y'all ain't helping me. Yeah. If you had your women, if you had heel and toe shoes on, you wouldn't say. According to where I come from. Nobody talking to me. Don't look down at your feet. <laughs> but that's how they used to, that's what they taught me. If you wore any suit valid than a brown or a black one, you wouldn't say. That's man's righteousness. Amen. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. That's man. Who governs righteousness but God? Okay. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. I'm so glad it's in the hands of God yes. and not in the hands of me. Amen. I wish I had at least two people clap on that. Because if the love to get to heaven was based on people, nobody would get there. Amen. But I'm so glad that he looked beyond shape out, quote, shade out. My faults. Amen. Anybody ever have faults in here? Amen. Anybody ever had need of God's agape love to cover their faults. He looked beyond my faults and he saw the need. This is what true love's about. That we don't look at the fault, but we look at the need. Amen. That's what true love is. People need saving. People need God to help them. And he used the people of God as instruments to draw them to God, not push them away. God didn't save you to drive folks away from the kingdom. He said, go ye in the hedges and the highway and compel them to come. He didn't say drive them away. He said, compel them to come. How can I compel them by showing them the love of God? Nobody in here is greater than God. If you is, I won't see you. Nobody. But some of y'all, to listen to some of you, when you talk, you think you are. In your righteousness. Have no compassion on nobody. Just because you got two days of Holy Ghost, that don't make you all Jesus. Come on here. So self-righteous. That you ain't no earthly good. Did you feel the energy and the love out there yesterday? A God being is we didn't have no restrictions. The folks came up, digging as little, they said, well, well, you can't touch this box. Uh-uh, touch the box. You got the wrong clothes on. Yeah, you can't touch this box because you got to make up a jewelry on the box. Get out of here. Amen. You can't have a hamburger. Your fingernails are too long. You can't have no uh, cotton candy or... Uh, 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 popcorn because your slit is up too high. Ain't nobody talking to me. I'm trying to help. A, I'm trying to help people. We judge folks the wrong way. This is why folks don't come around you. Hallelujah. You know I'm a witness for God. Now you ain't. Cause God is love. Amen. You ain't no witness. You're a witness of yourself. You know what I found out, man and spirit. Folks that want to pump themselves up in righteousness want a lot of attention on themselves, not God. Do I have a witness in here? You ain't trying to glorify God. You're trying to glorify yourself. You want to show everybody just how saved you are. Amen. You know God getting no glory out of that. You trying to say, well, look, I, 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 I'm just, I go over to the church to do everything right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The church to do everything right. Well, if that's the church you're doing everything right, we better check their Holy Ghost. Because if you're already doing everything right, you don't need Jesus. Amen. I wish I had a witness up in here. God is a perfect God for unperfect people. He set up a perfect church for us to draw people in to become perfect in his will, not yours. Amen. What does love have to do with it? This type of love looks like it goes beyond personal ability to support. See, folks will go so far with you, Beth, 
They'll show you how much they love. Get it. My father said this when he was sick. He said, son, let me tell you. Don't ever get real sick. Because people will show you just how much they really love you. Y'all are helping me up here. I know what he's talking about. He said, people are going to show you just how much they really love you when you get sick. This is why when we do marriage vows, we drop that in there. For better or worse. For sickness and in health. Because you're supposed to love them when they can't walk. You go in there and lift them up. Y'all may help you. Put them on the party. Oh, y'all, y'all folks, and stop looking at me now. That's facts. That's a godly love. God created marriage, and that's the type of God love marriage is. Going beyond your personal feelings to love that individual, just like Christ and God do for you. I'm tired of rolling them over and cleaning them. Well, you said I do, didn't you? Amen. <laughs> oh, we talking heavy today. Yeah. Probably won't be no shouting. I'm talking about love. True. That's what this is about. This generation don't know nothing about that. No. Y'all in it and out of it. But real love sticks together. Amen. Real love goes through hell and high water. Amen. Like God go with you. Amen. He don't throw you away just because you don't match up. Lady Sorrell and I, we learned in the gospel. At first, it's taught between a man and a woman. Y'all ain't helping me up again. She ain't perfect, and I'm not perfect. But you know what I do? I, God remind me, look how I love you in your imperfections. So I look at my wife and say, I have to love her in her imperfections. She no show, no do it with me. Amen, <laughs> somebody. Amen. This is a copy. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it would be right. Just cause, you know, she wake up and get on the left side of the bed. And I said, honey, I wish you'd get on the right, because I'm on the left. <laughs> I tell you, we're going to get divorced because of that. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Come on. A copy suffers long. Is that in the fruit of the spirit? Yes, yes, no. It's love, it's kind, it's meaning. I don't see nothing in there to say, well, when I get tired of you, I'm done with you. Amen. I'm talking about God's love. Amen. 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 This love is selfless, pure kindness, empathy, meaning the understanding of other folks' feelings. Amen. When we talk about God is love, you come to a point where you understand other people's plights and difficulties. Amen. Not that you experience them, but you try when you're a child of God to say, look, or I feel like Jesus feels with you. He, he's not such a high preacher where he cannot feel our infirmities and what we are going through. You have to build yourself in God to be the same way with your brothers and sisters. Amen. That you might not be going through what they're going through, but you at least have Empathy, where you can right. feel what they feel. Yeah. Or I recognize it and say, look, this is why I'm going to stay on my knees. Because yeah. I see what you're going through. Yeah. And if you can ever come to the point where you can put yourself in somebody else's place and feel it to such a degree, yeah. you'll keep on praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. You'll keep on staying on your knees for them. I'm trying to teach you how to be the church today. Yeah. Yeah. Church ain't all about jumping and shouting, dressing and being cool. Preaching and shaking the mic and singing and running. Yeah. Learning how to love people is what the church is. Amen. Amen. Learning how to draw people with the love of Christ yeah. is what the church is about. Yeah. That's what love's got to do with it. Yeah, right. Come on and give God a hand praise. Yeah. What does love got to do with it? People that look looking for love or godly love. Know what it looks like. God gives them a seventh sense. You know, uh, we had some visitors in here today. And I believe that they would allow me to speak on their behalf. The thing that made them come back from yesterday was the agape love that they felt. Can I get one of the witnesses? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. I 
I know my sister in the back. She, I know she, 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 me and her got a little thing, right? We had, and she had told me, I hope, she said, I'm coming. This was at a funeral. And uh, something happened, she didn't make it. But you know what? I believe one day she was going to be where she is today. That's right. Amen. Is she back there today, y'all? Amen. Amen. I didn't cast her off and say, all right, she ain't, she ain't coming. She just lied to me. I didn't do that. I told Lisa Rell, one day we're going to walk up, and you know, one day she's going to come down this aisle. She's going to be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. God had already told me that. Amen. I didn't cast her off because she didn't come the first time she said she wasn't coming. She might have had an accident. I don't know. We got to stop doing that to folks. Well, you didn't do what you said. Well, you didn't do what you said. Amen. God forgave you. Amen. He kept air going through your lungs, kept blood running through your veins, and you didn't do what you said. Amen. Talk about God be blood. See, we don't think about that. We so quick to nail people to the cross, crucify them, crucify them. We can't do this to people because you don't know how God's methodology is to save them. That's something that's why I backed up. You don't know how God is saving them. God bring everybody different to him. It is not your job to determine how God bringing people to him. All you need to do is exercise the fruits of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, and love people the way God loved you. Tell your neighbor, say, no, you That's what love got to do. That's what love got to do with. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give me another hand clap. Am I helping somebody in here? A copy. In the New Testament, it is recognized or defined as the fatherly love of God for humans, as well as human reciprocal love for God. Love is a reciprocal action. You can't say you love something and mistreat it. That's right. Sisters, if he say he loves you, he ain't never around you. He don't love you. Every once in a while is not love. Amen, somebody. Every once in a while. What if God loved you every once in a while? I'm helping somebody. What if God loved you every once in a while? Or when it was convenient? Well, they come to church, I'm going to love them on Sunday. Well, I'm going to love them on Wednesday because they attend the Bible study. But the rest of the day, I'm going to cut their breath off. They ain't going to breathe. How long are you going to last? <laughs> now, how long will you last not breathing four days out of a week? But y'all call that love. Get out of here. Hmm? Y'all call it love. I don't. I love Jesus every day because he loves me every day. What does love have to do with it? Some of y'all convenient lovers. Mm. Marvin Gates had a song, Distant Lovers. That's some of y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I love Jesus from a distance. Mm -mm. <laughs> that ain't real love either. No. Mm -mm. Baby need a new pair of shoes. Mama need a hairdo. Y'all ain't helping me. That's not real love. Loving Jesus from a distance, that's not real love. That's fake love. Hallelujah. Don't look at your neighbor because I don't want your neighbor to think I'm talking about. <laughs> but this is the climate, not only out in there, in the church. We got the wrong ideology about what real love is. Yes. And this is why we so messed up. Because we don't know how to love like God loves us. Amen. Love has everything to do with it. Love is reciprocal. I had an old pastor used to say this every time he came to Christ too. Love is what it does. Love is not just what it's saying. Love is what it does. If you love me, you're going to show me. Amen. You're going to do something for me. Like we had to do 
yesterday. Come on, clap. You might as well clap. Love was exemplified yesterday. Hmm? We weren't standing at the edge of the driveway saying, we love y'all. Everybody give $20 in this basket. <laughs> we didn't do that yesterday. The youth little didn't say, every pair of pants you pick up, that's 10 cents. No. She didn't say that. <laughs> She didn't say that. Only thing we want to buy, free, free, yours, 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 and they was yours and take it. <laughs> <laughs> and we were satisfied because yeah. we were demonstrating a godly. Yeah. Come on here. Yeah. We didn't charge them, well, uh, every hamburger, since Deacon Washington and uh, Brother Memoir Cook, we got to give them 10 cents for every hamburger you eat. We didn't do that. Yeah, godly love. Condition. You give it without expecting something back. Does that make any sense? Yeah. That's how God loves you. Mm. He gives it, and all He expects from you is you be obedient to His commandments. Amen. 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 And one of His commandments is to love thy neighbor yes. as you love yourself. Amen. Y'all, why y'all forget that one? Why y'all have problems with that one? Y'all do the first one pretty good, but when it comes to the second one, y'all have problems. Let me let me help some of y'all. Self-righteous folks. Now, we read over 1 John 4, 7 through 12 about, about God's love. Now, I'm, some of you theologians know John, 1 John is a general epistle. Paul wrote epistles to the church. But John is a general epistle meaning that it is written to address everybody. So when it talks about God's love, it's not just love focused on the righteous, but it's love of everybody. Because God created everything. And in this text with Matthew, when he speaks of love thy neighbor as thy love thyself, forgive them that despitefully use you, he's talking about everybody. Not just the saints in the church. He's talking about everybody. He's talking about folks that you had a bad run in out there, you got to still love them. People that has abused you out there, you got to still love them. They still need to be saved. You still got to go to their house and knock. Well, not on the deck. You still, when you see them, you still got to treat them with a smile. Amen. Even though when you were a kid in high school, they beat you up every day. <laughs> But they still have a soul that needs to be saved. Amen. You got to treat them like nothing ever happened. Am I helping somebody in here? I hope Amen. I am. Amen. That's your neighbor, those that's out there. This is the household of faith. Paul wrote letters to us in here. But the pistols, general pistols, is for the entire world. God wants us to love everybody that he created. Amen. That's the God we love. And you know what that does? That helps you to be a better Christian yes. when you learn to love people beyond their faults. Yes. It'll make you a better witness, too. Yes. Yes. It'll make you more effective in your witnessing because right. you won't look at them as being beneath you. Yes. Right. You'll be able to speak to them with accountability about your language, yes. that you ain't trying to talk all spiritual over their head. Amen. You meet them where they're at. That's what real love is. You meet people where they at. You're not expecting them to be more. You meet them where they at. Just like when you came in here, you didn't know everything from Genesis to Revelation. God dealt with you where you was at. And as you grew in God, you learned more about how to be like God. Amen. Amen. That's what his love is. You learn every day how to be more like him. Amen. I'm a pastor. And I ain't reached the plateau of God's love yet. Amen. We talked about it in Sunday school. And how I thought, you know, I was like, Peter, come on here. I'm doing all the religious stuff. God called you back and you this and that and this. Even after Peter got saved, he had to get confronted to his face by Paul. Because Peter was hypocritical. He was treating the Gentiles different than he was treating those of his own uh, ethnicity. He had a different, he was a hypocrite. In front of us, 
he was acting all holy than that. Mm -hmm. Then when he got with his people, he was basically, I guess, running up down saying, stay away from them, they unclean. Don't eat what they eat and all that crazy stuff. But even Jesus confronted him after he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Is that right? right. He came to him in a vision. He was saved. Because this happened all after the book of Acts. When Jesus met him in the dream, this happened after Acts chapter 2. Peter preached the first Pentecostal message. So he had the Holy Ghost. He was in the upper room. But just because you get the Holy Ghost, that don't teach you how to love like God loves. Amen. 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 You have to constantly work on that through the teaching of the Word of God. Amen. 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 How many of you glad that God showed God be love to you? Amen. Come on and give God a hand. And I hurry along because I don't want to be much longer. We have to learn to love people like God love us. That's what love got to do with us. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blameless before him in love. Amen. And this is what we're trying to draw others to be. Become holy and blameless, amen, amen. in love. The only way you can attract people is you have to demonstrate the love of God, which is holy and blameless. Amen? You can't attract people if you set up walls saying that you're better than them. They won't follow that type of uh, calling on them. They, they'll walk away from that. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to get back to love and life. God, I'm about to love Well, let's see how he loved us as I get ready to sit down. Since you so good and Holy Ghost filled, let's see how God loved you. Amen. It says in John 15 and 13, God so greater, no blood, no greater love mm -hmm. has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for a friend. Amen. When you was a sinner, Christ died some 2,000 years ago for you. Amen. He didn't know. You didn't know him from a hill of being. My fact, you wasn't even in the vapor of your mom and daddy's mind. I wasn't even. But Christ died for you. He showed you a godly love mm -hmm. when you weren't even thought of mm -hmm. into existence. Amen. But he died for you. Amen. Any of y'all thank you for it yet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Amen. Everybody ought to say glory or clap your hands or something. Amen. You didn't say yourself. It was the love that kept him on the cross. It was the love that allowed him to be strung up and go through the, the torture that he went through. That was love. Yeah. But God, he didn't ask nothing of you. Right. He went to the cross just because he loved you. Amen. You ought to do the same for others. Amen. You ought to be able to take a little something without getting so agitated because they're not where you at. Amen. And show the love of God to your neighbor. Amen. Show people that God has done something for you that you need to do for them. You need to love them like God has loved you. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. When we were yet sinners, Romans 5 and 8, Christ died for us. Anybody who's ever sinner? Yeah. Let's put up two hands, some of us. Come on. All of us were sinners. Huh? The Bible said, amen. All have sinned. Yes. Then leave your name out. Sandra, you ain't the only one. You ain't never seen Sandra. You ain't never seen. And say, all have sinned. Amen. And come short all of the glory of God. So that's why all of us need God. Amen. And you know that you need him. You know that your neighbor needs him. So you ought to invite them to God. Yes. At the end of this message, we're going to invite you to God. Yes. We want to introduce you to the love of God. Because the love of God is what's going to make you perfect in the will of God. Yeah. Does that make sense, somebody? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'm closing in. Agape is charity. And what is charity? We can find it in several parts of the scripture. Colossians 3, 14. And above all things, put on agape. But the scripture says charity which is the bond of perfection. As I told you, when you start loving folks like God loves you, then you become perfect in the will of your Father. Yes, yes. When you start loving people like God loves you, 
Then you become perfect. Now, what does that look like? If you still can't forgive people for stepping on your shoes 10 years ago, you ain't perfect. Amen. I don't care how many chickens you fix on Sunday, how many prayer meetings you attend. If you can't forgive folks for something they have wronged you for, you don't have the perfection of God working in your life. I don't care how long you've been in church. Amen. I'm going to say, I don't care how long you've been. You still need some work. Amen. You still need some work. God don't hold grudges. No, he doesn't. A godly love don't hold grudges. Amen? Amen. One more thing. 1 Timothy 1 and 5. Now to the end of the commandments is charity there is love out of pure heart and of good conscience and unfretted faith. You have to love with a pure heart yes. and with good consciousness. Yes. See, some folks, they love you outwardly but hate you inwardly. Yes. Yes. That's not a God. That's not God, babe. I just said something. Any of you new visitors ever experienced that? Mm -hmm. They love you outwardly but they really hate you on the inside. Yes. It don't take you long to know that, do you? No. Because they're going to show it after a while. Yes, they Lord. say it all day. I love you. I love you. And all of a sudden, they got a at the old J's. I don't know something in a second. They backstab us. You know what God be loved is not backstabbers. No. Right. Hmm? They back patterns. They encourage you. Mm. That's what God be loved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man's love has condition. You don't do what I say. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. With my tongue or whatever action I can do. To destroy you. But God don't do us like that. Could you imagine if God put some of y'all business in the street? <laughs> some of y'all be so shamed, y'all wouldn't even come to a church. Some of y'all did some horrific things in your life. And God, love forgave you. And you know the good thing about a God be loved, when God forgive you, he said, I cast it. And to see it forgive you, not to bring it up again. This is why you need that love. See, if I forgive you, I might say, well, my sister, come on, stand here with your sister if you don't mind. This is one of our sisters that come in from the outreach. Amen. See, I might forgive you, and then next week, because you didn't do me right, I'll bring up what you did. But Jesus <laughs> said, you know what? What you did, I don't remember no more. I forgave you because you have willfully repented of it. Don't sin no more. Amen. That's God be loved. God tells you, He don't care where you have messed up or what you have done. Just don't do it again and go do it no more. Amen. 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 I don't want to break up But I want to just tell you, this is what people are searching for. Amen. Love has everything to do with an ecclesia temple. Yes. If you're going to reach people, you have to show them the love of God. Amen. Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. I'm done. But the key text is Jeremiah. One of the key texts, 31. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with a everlasting, a godly love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Aren't you glad God drew you? You've been, some of y'all have been running, but God still drawing you. Y'all got a witness in here. Some of y'all running, but God is still drawing you. Yes, Matter of fact, with a God be loved, he still got a seat reserved with your name on it. Y'all to give God a praise for it. Amen. One thing about God's love, he don't let somebody else take a seat that he has assigned to you. That's a God be love. Yes. All he's telling you to do is, come on, baby, come on back. Sit at the table. Mephilosheth, come on. I don't care how broken you are. I don't care how disfigured you've been. Come on and sit at my table. Y'all ain't helping me. That's the love of God. I know you ain't worthy, but come on and sit. Yes. Yes. This is my love to you. My love to you is that I never let anybody else take your seat. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I designed your seat specifically for you, Trini. That seat had Trini. You know, like three little pit bears, and I'm going to let you go. And the, the, each one of them had the name, Papa Bear, Mother Bear, and Baby Bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, at God's table, you got a name. Whatever your name is, it's on that chair. Yeah. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Yeah. Y'all ain't doing this like you need to. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the love of God never releases your position in him. All he wants you to do is come and learn of him so that you can be like him. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise. Amen. 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 Father. We thank you for the truth. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, we thank you for your everlasting love. We thank you for the love, Lord, that you allowed us to be redeemed through. Lord, when we were yet sick, you died for us. Lord, you manifested your life in us through the word of God. And now, Lord, we must extend that type of love to our brothers and sisters. Lord, that they can see you in us and that they will be drawn unto this great plan of salvation. For God, you said in your word, it is not your desire that it should be lost, but all will come to repentance. And Lord, the only way they can come to you is that they come in repentance, that whatever they have done in the past will be forgiven because you're the only one that can remove sin out of our life. So God, touch a heart of mine. Lord, let them come unto you right now that you may demonstrate your love to them, to them in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's